In today's video, we'll talk about some commonly asked questions when it comes to powerlifting belts. However, if you're looking to find out information about why a belt is or isn't necessary, then I highly suggest you check out The Belt Bible by Greg Knuckles over at The Strength Theory. I'll link this article in the description box below. It's a highly recommended read regardless of your stance on belts. This video's primary focus will be around the power belt, not to be confused with the training belt, the bench belt, or Olympic lifting belt. Seems to be that most people have questions about power belts when it comes to strength training and bodybuilding. One reason these belts have so many questions around them is, number one, they're pretty expensive, and number two, they're not readily available for local pickup, meaning you can't go and try them on or use them before purchasing. So today we'll be taking a look about what thickness of belt to get, deciding between a prong or a lever, how to size correctly, how to wear the belt, and finally, how to break it in. The first attribute we'll discuss is thickness. In most cases, power belts are offered in three sizes, 6.5 mm, 10 mm, and 13 mm. A general rule of thumb is that the thinner the belt, the more comfortable, pliable, and easier to break in the belt will be. There's been discussion around whether or not a 13 mm provides more overall benefit, but I haven't found anything to support this theory carrying over to weight training other than the belt just being more firm. It should be noted that the thickness of a 10 or 13 mm belt typically includes both the leather and the suede that the belt is wrapped with. On average, a piece of suede will be between 1.5 to 4 millimeters thick. So for example, a 10 millimeter belt is usually a 6.5 millimeter piece of leather wrapped in two thin layers of suede. Going with suede oftentimes lets you customize the look of your belt, but one without it will be more firm due to there being more overall leather. So, which thickness should you get? I've found from using both and speaking with a lot of different lifters that it doesn't really matter. I haven't seen anything that would suggest you get more out of a thicker belt, as the amount of intra-abdominal pressure you can create, paired with the support of the thickness of the leather, isn't likely to be compromised with the loads that we're lifting. That being said, I'd suggest most people go with a 10mm, as I've known many people who find the 13mm to be uncomfortable to a point where it's discouraging to use. Another choice you'll be faced with is choosing a prong or lever belt. Power belts are typically offered in three fashions, single prong, double prong, or lever. A prong belt allows you to adjust the belt's fit between sets and exercises by adjusting which hole the prong is inserted to. The downside here is that it can be difficult to get a tight fit, and undoing the belt can be quite difficult depending on how tightly it's closed. It's for this reason that if you do decide to go with a prong belt, I highly suggest you go with a single prong. A double prong may look more appealing or heavy duty, but it offers no additional support and is only more difficult to get on and take off. If you don't like the sound of a prong, you can always go with a lever belt. Lever belts allow you to open and close the belt very quickly and easily. The lever also allows for a very tight fit. The downside here is that you're unable to adjust the tightness between sets or exercises without having to completely take off the lever. Sizing of lifting belts is probably one of the things I get asked about the most. You'll find some manufacturers have sizes listed that don't have an overlap, which can make size selection very tricky. For example, an Inzer medium fits waist sizes 30 to 33, where their large fits 34 to 38. Now, if you're a size 33 or 34, which belt do you choose? Other manufacturers like Pioneer have overlaps to make selections easier. Their mediums fit sizes 31 to 40, and their larges 35 to 44. This way, there's no gaps. If you're still unsure what size to get, the best thing to do is measure around where you'll be wearing the belt. For most, this will be somewhere around the navel area. This brings up another commonly asked question, where to wear the belt and how tight should it be? As mentioned earlier, most people wear the belt over their navel. This is in line with the area between your hips and your ribs, so the belt is not restricted by bone, but this is also the area that you'll be pushing into using intra-abdominal pressure. Some lifters prefer to wear their belt slightly up or slightly down, based off personal preference and body type. So how tight should your belt be? Since our goal here is to give us something to press out against and maximize intra-abdominal pressure, we want our belts as tight as possible while still allowing us to take a fully expanded breath out. Once you've made the previous decisions and order your belt, the last question that typically comes up is, how do I break it in? Many find that belts are pretty stiff upon arrival and can be somewhat uncomfortable initially. This can especially be true with a 13 mm belt as opposed to a 10 mm one. The best way to break in your belt is just to use it. This way it can conform to your body over time, but another popular way is to roll the leather back and forth when not in use. This can be extremely helpful for those with prong belts who have a tough time tightening to the correct position. Hopefully this video was able to answer some of the frequently asked questions that many people have about belts. If there's any questions that you feel were unanswered, feel free to ask them in the comments section below. I'd also like to thank Pioneer Fitness for supplying the customized belts you've seen in this video. If you're interested in getting your own customized weight training belts, be sure to check them out in the link in the description box below. 
As always, thanks so much for watching, and in the meantime, stay big.